No, I was I was happy to get Dr. Cosby, Dr. Kevin Cosby, Louisville, St. Stephen's, um, uh, and Simmons College to actually kind of do a video about what he is facing as a person with like $25 million in assets in Louisville, Kentucky. What the limitations are in terms of real business. Now, this, this video is about six minutes long, but please just watch it. Please pay attention. And Hello, my name is Kevin Cosby. And since 1979, I have been the pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church here in Louisville, Kentucky. St. Stephen Baptist Church is located in one of the poorest zip codes in America, where the poverty rate exceeds 40%. Uh, since being here, we've been able to accumulate a lot of land and build some nice facilities. And that is because in poor neighborhoods, especially in the 80s, uh, when we were land banking, uh, land was inexpensive. So we were able to purchase a lot of land. Another factor that we had in our favor was that uh, when we were acquiring land and building our facilities, uh, we had a lot of uh, baby boomers and also a lot of the pre-World War II babies uh, who had uh, resources, and they had resources to some degree because uh, the country uh, during the mid-60s and early 70s was trying to atone uh, for the lack of opportunity that had been extended to black people. So uh, during the time we were experiencing our economic boom, uh, timing was very important. We had baby boomers. Now as uh, I'm entering to my fourth year as the pastor of St. Stephen Church, we are transitioning and the baby boomers are passing off the scene and the millennials and Generation Z is coming on the scene. If it were not for the financial stability that the previous generation had provided us with, then we would have some serious challenges because the fact of the matter is that the millennials and Generation Z is having a lot of economic challenges and that's because we have not uh, renewed our commitment to making sure that justice is extended uh, to this generation. In addition to that, uh, I'm the president of Simmons College of Kentucky. And um, with all of our institutions, uh, we have assets in terms of property and building assets that exceeds $25 million. Uh, and we are the largest uh, black employers, uh, nonprofit private employer uh, in the city of Louisville and perhaps the entire state of Kentucky. But with all that we are doing, uh, without the assistance of the federal government, without justice and reparations, uh, there is no way that uh, we can continue to sustain what we're doing. And in fact, there's a limit to what we can do. We may have this institution here, but it's an institution that is serving people who are poor. And poor people bring to institutions like this uh, their poverty. Now, it may look like, well, uh, look what you did. Look how you were um, a self-help organization and you were able to do what you did uh, simply because you were able to mobilize the resources of, of black people. Well, we did do that, but we are always in jeopardy of being displaced because of gentrification. For example, not only is the land cheap for blacks who live here, but whites realize also that the land is cheap. And many businesses uh, that uh, avoided my community are now moving into my community and they're able to offer services uh, at a discounted price that I cannot offer. As a result of this, the development of my community by those on the outside who have wealth and resources that black people do not have means the displacement. Development means the displacement of anchor institutions. And that is why uh, that it is a mistake and it has not been thoroughly thought out, this whole notion that black people have the resources uh, in order to secure for themselves uh, a good living space in this country. Just as the federal government helped to prop up the white middle class, unless the federal government institutes some type of, of a Marshall Plan that was instituted uh, in, during World War II after, after Germany or some reconstruction that was instituted after the Civil War 
uh, than all of the prognostications of, uh, that we've been hearing about in terms of zero wealth by 2053, those prognostications will happen. I know that for a fact, not because the data simply says it, but I know it because I'm living it out. I remember the monies that we had in the 80s because of the baby boomers. Those dollars we don't have anymore because they're passing off the scene. And one of the reasons why I'm saying this is because uh, as a person who is a baby boomer and has benefited uh, because of the civil rights struggle and the justice struggle that specifically targeted black people to redress the issue of the descendants of enslaved Jim Crow people, uh, I feel like I have a moral responsibility uh, to make sure that the next generation has the same opportunities that my generation had. And the reason that my generation had those opportunities was because we had strong men and women from Martha King to Ella Baker who were advocates for justice uh, uh, and, and public dollars rightfully coming to black people, dollars that have been deprived. And we must continue that advocacy. Um, Frederick Douglass, who is uh, one of my heroes, uh, said that power concedes nothing except by demand. It never has and it never will. His word to us was agitate, 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 and agitate for the descendants of slaves so that in the words of the prophet Amos, justice will run down like waters.